we're looking at the outside condenser of a Fujitsu Mini Split. This unit is going on its third summer. It's got algae growing on top. It's dirty and it needs to be cleaned out. And the reason it's been three years is because it's on stands. It's protected by an overhead eave, so it doesn't get as dirty as units that are closer to the ground and are surrounded by plants. But after three years, it's, it's a little bit overdue. And normally I'd hire somebody to do this, but they're charging $200 and unfortunately, I have five of these, so that adds up. So I'm gonna tackle it myself. Here are some of the tools that I'm gonna use for this project. We have a, a garden hose and a nozzle so that we can wash off stuff. Of course, we're gonna need evaporator coil cleaner. And then for the algae and dirt on the exterior of the machine, I'm using this mold armor that seems to work pretty good. A container to hold all our screws as we take the panels off. Plastic bag and painter's tape so that we can protect any of the sensitive electronics because we don't want to get those wet. Just a bag to carry all this stuff with. Some kind of a Phillips screwdriver or drill driver to remove all the screw heads. Rags brushes to help clean off, water in case I get thirsty, gloves, oh, and uh, latex gloves for when I'm dealing with the chemicals. Almost forgot to mention that you should probably have a nozzle that has a rubber coating at the front end so that when you're getting in close around the fins, you don't accidentally um, hit the metal and, and damage those fins. So this is probably the safer way to go. When working with any of these units, a couple precautions. First, you want to make sure that the power is turned off. So turn it off at the circuit breaker and there should be a service disconnect panel nearby. And when you open it, there should be a lever that you can pull out and note the orientation. And now there is no way that power can energize the unit while I'm working on it. So that's just a great safety thing to do. The other precaution is not to damage these fins. These are very thin and delicate. Bending them decreases their efficiency. And if you damage one of the coils that's embedded, then you risk ruining the unit. So you gotta be careful. This is not for those who are faint of heart or reckless. Now I've never taken one of these apart. So the first thing I do is I look it over and I see there's this top, it's screwed in. So I note where the screws are. Then it looks like once this top comes off, this side panel can probably come off, which might lead me to taking this panel off. All the electronics are here. So not as important to get into this but if I have to, I will. And, and basically what I'm looking to do is expose the coils, which in this unit wrap around from the side to the back. So once I can expose that, I can clean that out. And I can also clean out uh, the fan. This one isn't as bad as some of the other units on the property, which have greater exposure, but we'll start out with this one because it's probably the easiest one to just to work around with and I have easy access to, to water. I count a total of six screws, two on this side, two on the front, two on the far side for the top. So we'll take that off first and see where that gets us. With the screws off, we should be able, there's actually a handle on this side, to lift this cover off.
and we get our first glimpse of the coil that runs, like I said, along one side and the back. And you see there's a little bit of crud there. Looking down, it's not bad if you go all the way down to the bottom. So the unit is fairly clean considering three years, but in all fairness, we didn't run this unit all that much. So now I inspect, I see that this is held on by a screw there, a screw there, and one here. Three bottom screws are off, but it still won't come off because there's a screw here that's being held in place. This braces the fan, so I'm gonna have to detach that. I think I can leave the rest of it alone and that should free up this panel, though it may be interlinked with this one, but we'll find out shortly. Despite removing that front panel still not coming off, something interesting, they put a screw right into um, the fin. See that? So something you shouldn't do, the manufacturer did. That's kind of strange. So um, maybe they should have used a shorter screw because there is a brace to catch it, but it, it just went right into the fins and very close to the actual coil. So I have to make a note of my, to myself to be careful when I go to put that back on, but it's also a, see if you can see that, it's a flat screw. It's not a pointed screw. So it won't pierce anything, so that's good to know. So, but I will have to release that screw only because there's this brace that comes around. And so this panel is being held in place by that. So I have one, two, three, and it should come apart. But I've said that what, two, three times already. Okay, let's see if we get Aha, there is movement. There's a little leg down here that needs to clear on the bottom. And let's see if I can show you this. There are little pieces of metal that catch this side panel with the front. So it looks like, yeah, this whole thing hinges, the side panel hinges on the front. I mean, in theory, I might be able to lift the whole thing together. one screw there that needs to be removed. Here's an inside view of what that panel connection looks like. So you see there's some catches that come off the main front panel and you just release and your side panel is free. I'm just gonna lay that somewhere where it's safe. This is your back. We did have to release one screw here. 
that actually attach to the frame and that frees this whole front. This catches, you see that there? There are four of those and those just slot right in to these four slots. So this is what you have on the front. This is all your electronics. Uh, the actual compressor is in there. You don't want to wet that. You do want to clean this out. This, depending on the exposure your unit has had to the elements, this could be really filthy with bugs and leaves and stuff. This isn't terrible. So I'm going to brush out. If I need to, I'll use an air compressor, but I don't think I'm going to need that. This coil here is for uh, defrosting in the winter. If it gets super cold, the unit will ice up and this helps to uh, defrost it and also to keep the condensation from freezing in the pan. Uh, fan needs cleaning. There's a screw there, so I may detach. I mean, there's a nut there, so I may detach the fan to clean the fan. Plus it just opens up this whole area so I can spray the coil cleaner on the inside. But basically, you want to clean this base out, go along the sides. If there's anything, you know, here's a bug, but if you see anything big that's caught up, you want to loosen that. Here is a heat sink. There's some gunk in there, so you want to get that out. Just keep the water away from this. And if you have to, you can just wrap this up in plastic to protect it. Not knowing the size of that, I just brought over my portable kit because I only wanted to make one trip to the garage. Uh, it turns out to be eight millimeters. I've also gotten a bucket sponge, a little bit of dishwashing lotion so I can clean that puppy off. Do note that because it's a fan, the thread is backwards to us so it's clockwise to get it off as opposed to you know lefty loosey put the nut out of the way it comes right off the spindle so we're ready to clean off the fan and now we have greater access so we can dust off and get this gunk out then we can start spraying using the brush I've gone lightly across the top surfaces and just gotten any debris out of the way Note that some of these grill pieces actually catch on the thin. So make sure that you know that when you go to put the top back on that you're not pinching into the coil, that you're actually just going in the same spot where, where it originally came out of. Putting some painter's tape on here. Then with my bag, I'm gonna catch the sticky side I only position the tape once and then I attach the bag to the tape I'll drape it down and cover oh by the way I know you're all curious so that's what the inside looks like uh, down there that's the compressor and you know that's the and then that's the other thing there and of course that's the really important thing so um, we have no business being in there so just make sure you Get the cover back in place and then protect this from getting wet. Satisfied that it's all sealed off, I go with the brush and I clean out this heat sink so that it's clean. Again, the bottom's a lot cleaner. Um, you can dump stuff off either through this hole here or if you start going towards the back, there are a bunch of holes back there so when you wash out the unit, all your debris will get flushed out. It's a little trickier on this side. I'm just gonna hit that with the water hose. So now, the event we've all been waiting for, it's time to clean the coil. We grab our uh, coil cleaner. This is AC Flow. I don't know how good or bad it is since this is the first time I've ever done this. And we apply it liberally and just let it soak in. And then we're gonna let it just stay on there for a few minutes and then we'll rinse it off.
And I'm actually going to do both the inside and outside of the coil since the air is drawn from the outside. And there are two coils. If you look here at the top, there are two actual separate coils. So the air comes in this way, gets brings in debris, and gets trapped. So this is the cleaner of the this is the cleaner of the two coils, but they both get dirty. So you might as well clean them both. Since we got this open and we went through this much trouble, and this is not a rush job. You're just gonna spray and let this stuff, and you can see it actually running down. And the ideal is this solution does all the work. So you're not gonna scrub or bring a brush in there. It's really the chemical solution that's gonna break down everything. Got a little bit of space in here, so I'm gonna work the back side and then finish the uh, the front side while waiting for the solution to soak in you might as well clean your fan when you're done with your fan get the garden hose low 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 pressure like this maybe that's really low there we go and all you want to do is just have this solution run out of the coils and again you're going to do that for the inside coil and for the outside coil you don't want a lot of pressure because again there's certain things you don't want to get wet like all the electronics remember this is a uh, very expensive little box and you don't want to have your little cleaning project turn into a multi hundred or a thousand dollar repair job. So take your time, rinse it out, low water pressure, and then we'll be done with this. Then we'll clean the exterior panels. Here's an example of just running that liquid out to the back where all the holes are. And you see this is already looking that floor is looking really nice anyway keep on doing this see you in a bit after rinsing down the unit just let it air dry you can actually start assembling it because it's outside so eventually it will air out but I don't know if you can tell but I certainly can that it is a lot cleaner both on the inside and outside and of course you know the pan cleans up nicely too because as the soap washes off and goes across it, it helps to clean off that surface. And a lot of the debris is gone. I think there's still a piece of a leaf back there that I can't get to, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. What I really like is the fact that this unit is clean once again. Now I'm going to work on that exterior panel and get those cleaned. For this product, we simply just put it on a clean sponge, wipe it on the surface, then you just let it sit and it magically just takes it away and then rinse it off and you're done. No scrubbing required. It's been a few minutes. Remarkable improvement. Is this still, look. Look at that. There's nothing that's attached anymore. It's just laying on top. So, pretty cool product, huh? You may want to, um, after you rinse it off, you may want to put a coat of car wax on it just to keep it shiny and, and clean, make it easier to wash off in the future. All the exterior panels are clean. I even did the platform, the rails, the condensation tubing, and the conduit 
that brings the Freon and power to the unit. So it looks like a brand new unit, except it's missing fan and the exterior cladding, but a couple of hours investment. I can see why the guys who do this get the money they do. It's a fair amount of work. And if I only had one unit, I would have popped for the 200. But since I still have four more units to go, for me, this is a worthwhile investment. Now all I have to do is uh, get the fan on, hook the front panel here, of course remove this, and then hook the side panel to that and set it in, making sure that I catch over there, that I make sure this is in front and that this from the back grill is down when I put the top on. We go to install the fan and it's not the round end, it's the triangular end that goes on the outside. The fan has a shaft which has one flat side to it. And if you look over on the hub, there's an arrow. You line that up with the flat side and it should fit. Ta-da! And remember, it goes the opposite way of what you would expect. So because we want to tighten, instead of going righty-tighty, we're going to go lefty-tighty because this is a fan and that's the way we do it with hands. Not too tight because you don't want to break anything. Just snug so it's not going to come loose. Fans in position. So this time I'm going to attach the side panel first because I've learned a thing or two by taking it apart. And we have a catch that's going to go right here. You see where this corner is? A piece of the metal is going to go on the inside and then the rest of it goes on the outside. And there's, you see that tab? That little tab there is what's gonna go on the inside of the unit. The rest of this is on the outside. Remember that there is a screw, not a pointed one, a flathead screw that's gonna go here that will attach to this. So let's see if I can show you this. So that little tab just catches on the inside. The rest goes on the outside. We come up to here and then we're gonna line that up with that hole that you see there and put that screw in so that'll hold this in place. I won't put any of the other screws until I get the front panel on. And just so that you know, you see that little triangle there? That lip just hangs on to this bracket that comes around. So that's how you know that you've properly attached it. So now I'm just gonna drive that screw in to hold that in place. Then we'll get to the front panel. To attach the front panel, these hooks are gonna come in at an angle. So basically it's gonna hinge around this side panel then I'll be able to catch these slots with the hooks on the front panel. But these need to catch first because these actually pivot in and you see they drop down. So I'm gonna try to do it all in one smooth, perfectly great move, but you'll be the judge of that.
with the seam even on this side and pretty much even on this side, it's time to start putting some screws into the unit. Uh, this was the last one that we took out, so I'm going to put this one in first. Then I'm going to attach the bottom screws on the side. I don't think there was one in the back, but if there's one left over, I'll know there is. And then I'll do the three bottom screws. Screws in. Don't forget that with this mount, this is the motor mount or the brace for the motor mount. Those tabs go in front of the front panel. And then there's your hole to put a screw in. Then we'll tighten up the side. Put the front and side panel on. It's time for the top. And the handle on the top is on your left hand side as you're facing the machine. Flat side at the far end. So we should be able to lay it. And remember we're making sure the grill drops over the fin and not in front of the fin when we put the top down. So there's a little bit of just paying attention of where things are poking. And that looks like it's going to go in the right place. Then we put in our screws. Two on the side, two on the front, and two on this side which is six, which is all I have left. So we did good. With the unit all clean and assembled, we switch on the circuit breaker. We come to the service disconnect panel, put our plug back in, and now the unit is energized. For those of you wondering what this black box is, it's a surge protector. In my research prior to buying the mini split, one of the common points of failure was the motherboard that resides inside the unit. It goes for about $1,000. And what a lot of the tech said was that a surge protector kind of just eliminated that problem pretty much. So I believe these were maybe $100 or so to get for each of the units. So well worth the cost of having to replace the motherboard. If you found any of this useful or interesting, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, join the subscription team, and as always, thank you ever so much for watching.